It's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Christian Martini. 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 Yeah. Oh, Martini. That's even better. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is with us from the Center for Subjectivity Research and the Helena Elses Center. Yeah. I love that title. Do you use that every time you present yourself? No. No, you don't. <laughs> Do you have an acronym for it or an abbreviation? No. No, no okay. <laughs> Today he's here to break down the wall of what I find extremely interesting, closed minds. Big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for Christian. Try to imagine that you are unable to transform your ideas and intentions into actions. This is the life for many people living with physical, psychological and social disorders. They lack agency. They lack control over mind and body. They are, so to say, enclosed in their own minds. In my PhD project, I want to deal with this issue of closed minds. And I'm not going to do that by breaking bad and inventing some open mind rock, but uh, I'm going to look at cerebral palsy which the son in the TV series Breaking Bad lives with. Cerebral palsy is a brain damage in the motor cortex and the cerebellum. And it leads to motor control difficulties, but also leads to higher socio-economical costs and more importantly, personal costs. So how do we break down the walls of closed minds in cerebral palsy? First thing, the mind is open. It's always open. It's bodily, something we act, something we do together with others, and something we can use technology like smartphone to extend. So if we want to understand closed-minded, we better be not be closed-minded scientists. We need to be open-minded and open up cognitive science. So we need to open up for collaboration with other minds. And I developed in interdisciplinary collaboration an interview framework where we took first-person data from living with CP and correlated with third-person data from brain scans. We found out that the motor control difficulties was actually not the biggest problem, but mental exhaustion, uncertainty, anxiety, and social phobia. Together with the Helene Elsa Center, we developed an uh, open-minded therapy where we actually let people with CP go through social camps in which they could experience a bodily and inactive increase in their agency and their control. But one thing is therapy, another thing is the social world, uh, everyday life in the social world. And usually we understand this in science, by the universities and in our closed labs. We wanted to understand the social world of CP in another way. So we engaged with very experts in interaction, namely actors and theatre directors at the Royal Danish Theatre, and they gave us this lab. <laughs> so that was very nice. And we did an open experiment and a theatre play where we found out that when we engage and encounter CP, we experience lack of agency and control, but that it's actually possible through engagement to open up our closed minds and change the social understanding of CP. And we are currently developing, we have developed a company where we do this with two other depression and anxiety. One thing is publishing this knowledge in journals. Another is to do it online. We wanted to show you, so we did a documentary movie about it. So I encourage you to go to the cinemas tomorrow, actually, and see how we did this new way of opening up our minds. We are currently doing that also at an open media lab at Roskilde University. And if you like these ideas, I hope you go to the cinemas and see how we are trying to break bad, breaking down the walls of closed minds in science and cerebral palsy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Christian. Uh, jury, he's all yours. Very interesting presentation. I missed you at some point where you said that you had to go to the theater to understand something about CP. Could you say that again? Yeah. <laughs> because, uh, yeah. The reason why we did this is because in modern social cognition, it's a lot about engagement. The mind is not just something in our heads, it's actually something we socially engage. And in a lot of research done on theater, it's actually that what the theater does, it engages you. So what we thought there was, and it's not just me, there's lots of social co cognitive sciences arguing this, but what we thought was, why set up a lab inside universities? Why not do it with actors and theatre directors that know how social engagement actually functions? So what we did was, we did some, we hijacked a focus group that didn't know they wanted to go to the theatre, and then we did some psychological testing, we did some question service during a theatre play, we did some psychological testing afterwards, and we did some interviews. And what we found out were these things that when they experience uh, uh, cerebral palsy, people with cerebral palsy, they actually become close-minded. 
But what we also found out, and that was the idea, was could a theater play actually break down the wall of this closed-mindedness and transform it into a more, so to say, open engagement with cerebral palsy? So it was both a theater play and uh, a lab session <laughs> and an experiment. I might be a little bit slow, but so did you have patients on the stage or did they we perform had, a play? We had this guy. About? We had this guy, Jakob Nossel, yeah. who is also the main character in the movie, uh, because it's about the theater play. And what we did with Jakob and another actor, um, uh, uh, Christopher Fabricius, we set up social interaction trying to show what is the life from the perspective of cerebral palsy. So we did set up all these things of Jakob going through his day in order to see if people could understand, relate. It's a, it's a theater about social cognition, social understanding. So we had Jakob who lives with cerebral palsy and has spastic speech. He was the main character on stage. And then we tried to sort of say manipulate, no, nudge or something like that, people into to engagement. What is your scientific perspective here, or scientific perspectives? Is it medical, psychological, or...? Like, the way of... This is the, a big, huge new project in cognitive science. I'll show you, called the open mind. And the whole idea of being open mind cognitive scientist is not just to put you in, I'm a philosopher, I'm a psychologist, I'm a neuroscientist. I'm a bit of both. The whole idea is that it's not so much about being in silos, trying to, in our own disciplines, understand the mind. It's too complex. So what we do is actually, I work in, my PhD project is in philosophy, psychology, and neuroscience. And I work with psychologists, philosophers, and neuroscientists. So the scientific perspective is cognitive science. It's the mind. Could you tell us something about the short-term and long-term uh advantage of your research? What will it be mean to the greater society and the... Okay, the short term, it has already meant a lot for these people at the Helene Elsa Center. And I think we have done, this was a pilot uh, camp um, intervention, it's a therapy, but a therapy. And we have done ever since that, I think 10 camps. So the short term is that already 112 people have went through these and the success is huge. They have gone through both uh, teenagers and adults, both severe, handicapped in wheelchairs and more able people have gone through this and the, the sort of say success is extreme crazy, not because of me, but because of the therapists. Um, the long term is actually, I'm working with the Sjælstyrelsen, I don't know that the English word for that, where we actually are working on these things of trying to, with the movie and the theater play, of working on prejudices. So it's not just about working directly and individually with the person with cerebral palsy. It's also working with their relatives or working with a social narrative of how you understand people that live with disability. And hope that's not something you do like in a day-to-day -day basis. That's something you do strategically and politically over a long period of time. So that's what we want to raise uh, with this uh, film and what, we are, what I've been discussing the last couple of weeks in radio programs and televisions. Great, thank you. We have time for one question from the audience. Would anyone like to ask Christian Martini about his breaking the walls of closed minds? Yes, sir. Let me get you the mic. One second. There you go. Uh, you said that you had uh, huge results. Uh, have they been? Have you published anything on it? And uh, well, have yeah. your results been uh, reproduced by anybody else? Not. Uh, that's all. I don't know if you follow the psychology big debate on reproducibility in psychology. That's a bit difficult but I'll leave that aside. It's been published in a number of articles. Some of them you can find, see if I can, you can find here, and there's some more somewhere. Um, it's not been reproduced, but the way we also work in, in open-minded cognitive science is not so much of falling into the evidence-based trap. We're working with people here. So what, the way we validate these things is actually more pragmatic. It's to see if it actually works for the people that more or less inflicted, which means cerebral palsy. So that's more or less uh, the best answer, and hopefully somebody will take it up and we can discuss these things that have been published. So Great. That's it. You're uh, right on time. That's awesome. <laughs> Wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for Christian Martini. <laughs> Thank you, Christian. Thank you. 
I'll fast forward. So ladies and gentlemen, you know the routine. One minute to score your speaker. <laughs>